think this is the one we were just watching, which obviously wasn't it. All right, let's check out the 1.0 primer then. Hello, and welcome to Playframe. My name is Dan, and this is the start of a story-focused and rather accelerated playthrough of Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV. Except not today. Today, we are doing a primer. We're trying to find a video that had like um, like this going through the um, 1.0 story. You see, for those of you who do about. not know, Final Fantasy XIV had a somewhat rocky start, like well, yeah. a true game dev nightmare scenario. I do to really quickly enjoy summarize, the no clip, um, Square Enix released though. this it, like, Final Fantasy MMO job, back in 2010, um, and it thing. was not good. It was quite bad, in fact. Its design was clunky, it ran horribly, it was a disaster was not, in pretty much every possible way. Now, most so times when something like that happens in well, this industry, when a game ships in this shabby well, estate and reviews this poorly, the studio behind it just has to cut their losses and move on. <clears throat> or go bankrupt and disappear, which is far more likely when that failed game is an MMO, one of yeah. the most expensive kinds of game you can make. But, as you me, can point, probably surmise, that is not what happens with Final Fantasy XIV. Um, no, instead, they decided to make the MMO again. And I need to stress, <laughs> this is basically That's a very unheard good question, of. Jimmy. Square Enix had just thrown an enormous amount of funding at the development of this AAA MMORPG for their flagship franchise, watched that money pile burst into flame, and, and I mean, then decided to try extinguishing the fire by throwing because another equally enormous pile wreck. of highly combustible money on top of it. And the wildest thing is that this worked. It did work. Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV is a very good MMO now. Mm -hmm. And what's more, over the course of several Yoshi expansions, it's also become a legitimately great one, Final man. Fantasy game. But he because 2013's Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn functioned as a soft reboot, replacing the busted original release, the contents of that 1.0 version of the game have For been months. completely overwritten. You cannot yes. play it anymore. It well, no longer exists. That's why we're but here. But the 1.0 right. story right. is still technically canon, so since that's we can no it's longer experience canon. that original story, I thought that I would put together a quick primer here to get you up to speed on what preceded the story of Final Fantasy XIV See, this is what as we, we can experience at. This is what it today. We're looking for, guys. By the way, if you want to learn this more exactly about the story of how for. this MMO was miraculously resuscitated, and that's I highly no recommend you do, it's one of the wildest feel-good stories in game development. Actually. Is. recommendations. <laughs> the first is Noclip's phenomenal three-part documentary mm -hmm. on the game, which will give you the developer side perspective on what went down. Yeah, there's a lot of the interviews with like Yoshi The second is The Fall and Rise of like Final that, Fantasy XIV on the Speakers Network, a series Both which catalogs the game's history that from more of a player perspective. Still going on. Also, because I obviously can't capture <laughs> one point of footage myself, one, I'm going to be like using some back. clips from these channels in order to tell this um, yeah, they actually put out a new episode just a few weeks back detailing the um, build-up to Heaven's Word and the release of Heaven's Word. And it's, it's like, so good. Like, it, honestly, it is such a, it is such a, such a great turnaround story. It's no, no, no different than, um, like, No Man's Sky. Um, except No Man's Sky's not, well, I guess technically it's, a, it's an MMO. Um, but yeah, it, it, regardless. Um, it's the, the same kind of thing, though. Like, like, like drastic turnaround. Story. Although, honestly, I would say that Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 was worse than No Man's Sky 1.0, but that's just a matter of opinion, honestly. Each clip will be appropriately credited in the corner of the video, and there are links to all of these channels in the description below. A big thank you to all of them for... Honestly, though, like, No Man's Sky was one of those ones that I jumped into... I think I we got that, like, the if not the day it released, like, that same week. And, you know, a lot of people hated it. I didn't. I actually liked, I actually liked No Man's Sky 1.0. Um, I like the, I like the direction they've gone and the changes they've made, but I still kind of miss that old school, like, they always had, like, these huge, massive pillars of, of, uh, of, um, minerals to mine and shit like that, but, um, which they don't have anymore. I don't know. I don't know, like, No Man's Sky is good, but, like, it feels bleached. It feels cleaned, you know? I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Um, Final Fantasy XIV, however, 2.0 is not like that at all. Like 2.0 compared to what I know, what I've heard of 1.0 is insane turnaround. So, like it's it's yeah yeah. Or uploading this footage and preserving I mean, a Final glimpse Fantasy of the before times for us. But no okay, Star, let's get to it. From my, from my perspective. So Final Fantasy XIV is the biggest problem. <laughs> The biggest problem with 14 had to do with the game mechanics more so than the story itself. The game mechanics that they had put in in 1.0 were just um, 
were just horrendous. Now, I, to be fair, I don't know anything about the story, which is why we're here. But like the the everything that I've heard from the game mechanics in one it was it was bad, like just bad. Like they 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 had no a clue what they were doing for an MMO. Set in a place called. It felt like they. I know I keep interrupting. It felt like they were treating um, one more like a mobile game, um, like. Uh, like Farmville kind of thing where you know you had these built-in mechanics to force people to play longer with re diminishing returns basically Aorzia and you began the 1.0 version of the game as a freelance adventurer looking for work you got to choose one of the three main city states in which to begin your journey Ordania, like Linsa Laminsa or Ulda each the of which had their suck. own local stories troubles and characters to encounter before you were sent off to experience the main plot now, I'm not going to bore you with a full recap of the original game story. Honestly, most of the details aren't that important, or even that interesting. And A Realm Reborn does a pretty right good now, job at least... recapping the things you do need to know going forward. However, there are a few particularly interesting plot points and events that I think are <sighs> worth going over. Okay. Starting with... I mean, as long as we get a... a... Eorzea is the place right? you call home, but it's just one region in this game's world. There are several land masses on this planet, and one of them belongs to a nation called Garlemald. Where Eorzea is a realm of magic, the domineering Garlean. Yeah, see, because we're still seeing, um, like, 6.0, because we still have Old Charlayan out there to the west, and we got Thavnir out here with Rads at Hand. So, like, they're still using the more recent maps, even if they're talking about 1.0 shit. Empire has recently undergone a massive technological revolution. Picture the Empire from Final Fantasy XII and you've basically got the idea. They are powerful and they are eager to expand and conquer their more primitive magically. I'm sad that in 2.0 they got rid of those ships because they should. I remember seeing them in the in the 1.0 trailer. The inclined neighbors. And I'm sad they don't. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what it is about those like stick ships that just. This tickle me so. They just make me laugh. They seem so unwieldy, like these just sticks with wings. It's, it's literally what it is. Initial like, attack they, on Eorzea started pretty know, well. They, they quickly occupied one of the other major Eorzean <laughs> city-states, Alamigo, and they were all set to continue the campaign, but it turns out they, yeah, they were do, not prepared they for the local dragons. Their Christ. advance was brought to an abrupt halt when the great dragon Midgard Sormer brought down their flagship, yeah. both crashing into a giant wellspring of ether. Ether mm. is the source of magic in this world. It's more or less the life stream from Final Fantasy VII, basically, more or less. Anyway, the Later resulting Midgard. explosion not only destroyed both the flagship <laughs> and Midgard Swarmer, but also loosed a heck ton of this ether into the surrounding environment. Uh, ether yeah. which some would quickly begin to use in rituals, attempting to summon these magical demigods called primals. <laughs> and that creates a problem for just about everybody, Eorzea included, because them things is dangerous. The Garleans <laughs> would fall back for the time being, but this new... You know, I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. And the Garleans do have the best-looking armor. Because look at this shit. Like, I want this. Is that... I think it's a dragoon. It looks like a spear. Is that a dragoon? I don't know. Either way, like... <laughs> I really like this the design of this armor. They always have, like, these big fucking, like, horns and, like, swooping wings and shit on their helmets. I don't know. They don't seem very, um... They don't seem the most efficient means of armor, but they do seem a lot of fun. <laughs> new primal threat only gave them new pretense for military action in Eorzea. Their leaders started to put together plans. We'll get to those in a minute. <laughs> plans. <laughs> but back to you, the player in 1.0, an adventurer okay. working with Eorzea's city-states yeah, a definitely. decade or so after the Imperial invasion stopped. The armor panties are ruining the whole look. <laughs> okay, that's fair, I guess. Well, I mean, if you look at like the old, the old, um, like the medieval armor, they still had like the the cod piece that was, you know, that was the center piece, center point of the pants, basically. So it's not really a lot different than that, to be fair. Called out. You spend your but days trying your to solve <laughs> local problems, many of which ultimately have to do with those primals that are now popping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. Turns out that the other sentient Whoa, species the of Eorzea worship those Was that? Was that I first things, Ifrit? And they keep Ifrit? trying to Jesus summon them Christ. against you. But during... What was he jumping off the walls like fucking, um, like Revenant or fucking, or like Hulk from the Avengers movie? 
Well, yeah, but this one specifically looked a lot like straight up lace underwear. I mean, it's in one of your the adventures, maybe. you witness a particularly flashy meteor shower, it could be. and Who after knows? that point, you start to experience some weird things. It seems that you have somehow developed the ability to oh, magically wow. witness past events. You don't have much control over this power, but it turns out you aren't oh, the only one oh, to suddenly oh, receive this ability. Magic. Others in the world have mysteriously you know. developed this power, which they call the Echo. And one of these people has even created a small underground... Okay. I like that outfit better. <laughs> Where's this outfit, Minfilia? Why'd you change gear for 2.0? Like, you put on the stupid skirt that the giant holes in it that... Was just literally just like like leg braces. I don't even know what that shit is, but like this outfit looks a lot better. An organization dedicated to using it for Aorzia's protection. Much of your time in 1.0 would be spent working. Oh, okay, never mind. So her outfit did change between 1.0 and 2.0, but not mud flaps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fair. She does, she does have mud flaps. Yeah, okay. King <laughs> with this group and other allies to keep the primals at bay. Assuming, of course, you were actually patient enough to still be playing the 1.0 version of the game. As I said before, things looked pretty grim for Final Fantasy XIV at this time. Reviews were looking. abysmal, players were unhappy, and... It was so bad they had to make the characters look sexy to put up with the game. <laughs> See, in here I thought that was always their thing. Like, compared to, like, World of Warcraft, I always thought that that was Final Fantasy's thing. Like, all their people just had to look sexy, basically. What? Just in general, the characters in Final Fantasy. Lunas was saying that it was so bad they had to make the characters look sexy to put up with the game. Because <laughs> they changed, um, they changed Minfil Minfilia's, like, outfit from 1.0 to 2.0. A little bit, a little bit. And the game was hemorrhaging <laughs> money by the day. Enter Naoki Yoshida lovingly known by yes. the community as Yoshi P. Yoshi Yoshida-san is handed control of Final Fantasy XIV after its disastrous launch. He oh, assesses yeah. the situation with his team and determines that, unfortunately, the underlying structure of this game is simply too broken to save. There is no yeah. way they can salvage this foundation, much also, less expand yeah. on it in the years to come. Also, so he puts yeah. together a plan. <laughs> they will continue supporting the oh, busted 1.0 version with patches our lord and savior, Yoshi P. <laughs> but in 1.0, they added lace patties the first time. <laughs> and fixes and the additional content that was already promised. And simultaneously, in the background, they will rebuild Final Fantasy XIV from the ground up, mm -hmm, completely replacing mm -hmm. 1.0 with this new version He's once it's ready. Star, it is a man. risky play, but at this point, Square Enix does not have many love better it. options to prevent long-term damage I to love every, their biggest. I honestly, love everybody in like the Final Fantasy XIV, um, like the developers, like, that whole that whole group. Um, him and Soken and who's the dude that's always with him in the uh, like the live letters the the one guy God I don't know what, I don't know his name off the top of my head and then of course Koji Koji Fox brands so the plan is approved Final Fantasy XIV 1.0's days are numbered you know really and it was a very brave thing and I'm really kind of surprised that they approved it because of how much money that it would take to do the whole turnaround while keeping while keeping everything up and running as it was. Um, and then having them basically build it all up from the ground up again. Uh, it was kind of kind of amazing that Square that Square gave that the green light. Umbered. And Yoshi P wants to send it out with a bang. And yes, he does. So the Garlean invasion force has been busy <clears throat> rallying since that dragon fiasco, and the legatus of the Seventh Legion, Nail Von Darnus, has an idea. Using some ancient technology. See, okay, all right, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so there's... Jim Neil Von Darnus has an idea. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, like, I kind of see what you're saying, Kush, the lace underwear thing. <laughs> so that's Neil Van Darnus, okay. To be fair, though, it's the, it's the helmet that's really the... Using that's, some... That's the thing right there, like that. <laughs> ancient technology the Empire's been studying, Darnus proposes that yeah. they bring down one of the visible. planet's moons, Dalamud, 
and drop it on Eorzea meteor style. Not only would this meteor project no. quickly eliminate all Eorzean opposition, but the Legatus argues that Scorched Earth is the only practical solution to the primal threat. A risky strategy, to be sure, but at this point, Garlean leadership is feeling ready to roll the dice, so the plan is approved. Over well, the next year or so of content patches, as, as additional features come online, game stability slowly improves, and story content trickles in, players begin to notice the planet's lesser moon turn yeah. red, and oh, yeah, then grow that. larger in the sky. And larger, oh, and yeah. larger. Oh, damn, Things yeah. in Eorzea start to get weird. Okay, Weather so pattern those were the, those were the, um, those were the, uh, those were the expansions, right? Or not the expansion, but the patches, right? The 1.19, 1 1.2, 1 1.2, those are the patch numbers, right? Yes, well, and that's good because now when we play it next Saturday, which I'm sure it will come up, you guys can play with me, and hopefully I can make it even further, and we can see if we can get, get through the game. <laughs> But I am very glad that you both have played up now because I can't wait to play that one multiplayer at some point. Things in Eorzea start to get weird. Weather patterns change, bizarre monsters start popping up ah. everywhere. Players even begin to see their characters experiencing nightmares when they log in. And as oh, Dalamud shit. gets closer, it really? becomes increasingly clear there is something very unnatural about the look of this moon. Yeah. The players eventually succeed in defeating Vandarnus and destroying the transmitter they used to bring Dalamud down, and yet the moon continues to descend. At that point, it's in a desperation, too late. the Eorzean Alliance plans one last ditch operation a oh, ritual Luis, to wow. summon the gods themselves to Eorzea's defense. But the ideal location for this ritual is the predicted point of impact, which is currently occupied by Imperials. Of so course. the Alliance readies its armies for a fight on the fields of Cartano. Uh, At this point, okay. the 1.0 okay. server shutdown is drawing near, and things look bleak for Eorzea. <laughs> Dalamud is so close that it's getting hard to tell day from night. The devs are straight up just spawning monsters inside yeah, cities now in an impossible look number. Shit. All area music That's has been insanity. replaced by a faint get... vocal rendition of the game's original Answers. theme. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That I've heard before. Players either but try their best crazy. to protect their hometowns from the monster hordes, or oh, simply Jesus. gather and wait to see what happens next. Then, just as the servers go dark, a new cinematic trailer is released depicting the Battle of Cartano. Yeah. Eorzean and Garlean armies fight as Dalamut looms just overhead. I love then, this unexpectedly, though, the mechanical moon breaks open, revealing so a new good. and very angry problem. The Elder Primal Bahamut, now free, begins laying waste to everything. The god summoning ritual fails, and in his final moments, one of your noteworthy ally characters, an old scholar named Louis Swa, magically spirits the players <laughs> oh, forward Swa. in time to safety. Several months later, in 2013, Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn would launch, and the 1.0 players would crazy. log into these shiny new 2.0 servers to find their characters reappearing five years after the Calamity, in a much better game and a very different Eorzea. <laughs> And now you're caught uh, up. So I hope you have enjoyed this little primer. I hope the okay, added context makes the experience of A Realm Reborn even more enjoyable. And yes. I hope I will see you tomorrow when we officially get this Final Fantasy XIV story playthrough started. Until then. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. All right. That's that's good. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to uh, drop a sub. Sure. That's not what I meant. All right. I'm going to drop a sub. There we go. Cool. When did that come out? A year ago. Oh, that's not bad. All right. So, I mean, we didn't get all the, the details, but I think we got a pretty good, decent overview of the of the thing. And honestly, I think um, that was a that was a very good. It doesn't seem like it was hell. No, no. And that's the thing is like, obviously they cut out a lot of the tedious stuff from this from this playthrough from this uh, you know recap. So it's not like it was, it's not like they, they went through, and they, they didn't go through everything, because obviously, I mean, the frickin', um, the cutscenes were like seven hours, so. Yeah, yeah, that was, um, quite interesting. But, I mean, yeah, this is the thing, you gotta, those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it, right? So, that's why the title, hence, Know Your History. 
Because um, <clears throat> now we, we know where we came from and we're, we know where we're going to. So, yeah. Hell yeah. 